and this is my third time recording this because I'm really freaking tired. <laughs> so today I'm supposed to have four appointments and the whole day has just kind of gone exactly opposite of what I thought it would. So first appointment was supposed to be a hip x-ray. We accidentally leave the house an hour early. We have to drive like three hours. So we're out of the house by like seven and then realize, crap, we leave at seven to be there at 10. So we're gonna be an hour early. But then I look at my my chart and the hip x-ray isn't even on there. So I call radiology and they're like, huh, we don't have an order for your hip x-ray. So I call the sarcoma center and they're like, oh, we don't need a hip x-ray, we have an MRI. And I'm like, for real? <laughs> they're the ones who told me they needed the hip x-ray. But anyway, we ended up being a good two hours early. So that is where Ross comes in. And then we got to my second appointment, which ended up being my first appointment, which was with my cancer specialist. And my game plan was to get this tumor out of my leg or so help me because it's been causing a lot of pain. I can't walk and I'm just done with the sucker. But I went and spoke with my cancer doctor, really sweet, thorough guy. And he just doesn't, he isn't agreeing with my musculoskeletal doctor's opinion that this is causing the pain. And because my leg did go numb at the dance, I didn't tell you guys about that. So when I was at the dance with my sister, I was doing the Cupid shuffle and I shuffled all the feeling out of my leg. I got a ton of pain by that tumor area and the whole leg just went numb. So because of the numbness and the pain, he thinks something might be pressing on my back. So he wants me to do a spinal MRI and then he'll get back to me on that one. And I think if the spinal MRI shows nothing, they're gonna just proceed with the surgery. And then if the spinal MRI shows something, they're gonna go from there. So then my third appointment was supposed to be rheumatology, but the cancer appointment went over. So both me and my mom missed our rheumatology appointments. And I was super bummed because I really needed that appointment and she really needed that appointment. And I was just after the cancer appointment because I wanted an easy answer and it's not. I was sad and overwhelmed and just like ready to cry into my nachos. <laughs> like I was so done and I'm still a little done to be totally honest. Whoa, bump. But we went and did a little more retail therapy and that should be covered by your insurance, I'm pretty sure, because it works better than any other thing I've tried to get you out of a bad mood. But anyway, then we went to my third appointment, which was immunology and it was super smooth. This is one of the first times he's seen me and I'm not hacking my brains out. So he was pretty happy about that and heck, I'm pretty happy about that. And he's actually doing a presentation on IVIG and wanted some patients to share their stories, but I will be out of town, which is a super bummer because I've always wanted to be part of something like that. So I really hope that opportunity comes again. And he scoped my nose because it kind of felt like I've been getting a cold and he didn't see any infections or whatever. So no antibiotics, yes. And he's going to add some fluids to my next IVIG because I have a sucky gut and cannot drink a lot of water. So that's why I got super dizzy last time. And then we are, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Maybe not. I don't know. But then we, sched we got it scheduled actually. So I get the spinal MRI tonight, which is super nice. Literally 12 hours later from when we left the house, I'm getting my spinal MRI at 7.30. So I think the cancer doctor is gonna be a little surprised when I get it in one day, but let's be honest, I have been training to be a medical secretary since I was 14. That could be my calling in life. <laughs> So there are all my appointments and I did ask my immunologist about the coronavirus because if anyone should know about this, it's him and they are taking precautions like he's not shaking hands and stuff, but he believes people are blowing ad proportions and you don't need to buy giant things of toilet paper. That will not protect you. I promise. <laughs> He actually, I'm not screwed. So everyone telling me I'm going to die, it's not the case because CVID, your body doesn't make the thing that protects you from bacteria. Uh, the coronavirus is a virus. So as long as your T cells are good, you're not going to die. So all of you with low T cells stock up on that toilet paper. And if you have a perfectly fine immune system or immune suppressed in some other way, you should be just fine. So that is my update for now. It has been a long day and I am exhausted. But again, the news should be coming soon. We were in a scary movie because it was like three hours till my scans. And then the scariest thing happened during the scary movie is I got a call saying that my insurance 
won't cover the MRI today and needs a couple days so I could either take the risk and sign a paper saying I'm responsible if my insurance doesn't pay or wait a couple days. So guess who made a smart decision? Wait a couple days. So I have to come back on here, up here Tuesday. Yeah. What am I saying? <laughs> Guys, I'm so tired. <laughs> yeah, I have to come back up here Tuesday for the MRI. I should get the call Monday or Tuesday about the biopsy results. And my brain is absolutely fried. So we are at one of my favorite little restaurants, the One Man Band Diner. I'm gonna go eat a Philly cheesesteak and then sleep for 40 years. <laughs> Uh, stay strong. Thanks for watching. If you like this video or any of my videos or any of my content, make sure to like and subscribe. I think it's really cheesy when people say that, but when you actually say that, people remember to like and subscribe. So do it. Have a great night and always smile.